सो डे स्टूडेंट सो टूडे अवर टॉपिक इज इलेक्ट्रॉन ट्रांसपोर्ट चेन सो इलेक्ट्रॉन ट्रांसपोर्ट चेन इट इज मेनली प्रेजेंट इन द मेम्रिन्स ऑफ द माइटोकॉन्ड्रिया सो दैट वॉज हेल्पफुल फॉर द जनरेशन ऑफ द ए टी पी सो ये द इलेक्ट्रॉन ट्रांसपोर्ट चेन इज नथिंग बट ए सीरीज ऑफ प्रोटीन्स आर ए सीरीज ऑफ ऑर्गेनिक मॉलिकूल सो दोज आर हेल्पफुल फॉर द मूवमेंट ऑफ द इलेक्ट्रॉन्स ओके सो ड्यू टू मूवमेंट ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉन्स सम प्रोटॉन्स कैन बी एक्सचेंज विल बी टेकम प्लस ओके सो ड्यू टू दैट इन द लास्ट स्टेप सर्टन टाइप ऑफ एनर्जी वॉज प्रोड्यूसेस दैट इज इन द फॉर्म ऑफ द ए टी पी आर डू नो वीरियस पाथवे आर बायोलॉजिकल ऑक्सीडेशन ऑफ द बायोलॉजिकल मॉलिकूल सो दैट वॉज टेकन प्लस इन द माइटोकॉन्ड्रिया ओके मेनी लाइक द बीटा ऑक्सीडेशन टी सी साइकल ऑक्सीडेशन ऑफ द अमोन एसिड्स सो दीज आर द मेन पाथवे से वेर वी कैन गॉट द लॉट ऑफ एनर्जी और लॉट ऑफ ए टी पी सो दैट वॉज ऑकर्स इन द माइट्रोकॉन्ड्रिया सो दैट्स वाई द माइट्रोकॉन्ड्रिया इट इज नोन एज द पावर हाउस फॉर द एनर्जी और पावर हाउस ऑफ द सेल बिकॉज इट कैन रिस्टोर द आर इट कैन इन्वॉल्व इन द जनरेशन ऑफ द लॉट ऑफ एनर्जी सो दैट एनर्जी वॉज रिक्वाइर्ड फॉर द वंस अगेन द ग्रोथ ऑफ द बॉडी डेवलपमेंट ऑफ द बॉडी मल्टीप्लीकेशन ऑफ द सेल्स और सिंथसिस ऑफ द हारमोन्स एंजाइम सब्सटेंस एंड एज वेल एज रिमोल ऑफ द वेस्ट मटेरियल ओके सो दिस इज द टिपिकल स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ द माइट्रोकॉन्ड्रिया सो माइट्रोकॉन्ड्रिया इट विल बी हैविंग द क्रिस्टे इट इज हैविंग द लेयर और मैट्रिक्स ओके सो ओवर द सो दिस माइट्रोकॉन्ड्रिया सो इट विल बी हैविंग द टू मेम्रेन वन इज द दैट इज द इनर मेम्रेन एंड अनदर वन इज द आउटर मेम्रेन सो दिस इज द आउटर मेम्रेन एंड इन साइड दैट वन इज द इनर मेम्रेन and inside the inner membrane so this all part that was known as the criste that the borderline and inside that was known as the matrix okay so that is inner uh, that is inside the inner membrane so that was known as the mitochondrial matrix and outer uh, that is inner layer just above uh, just above the matrix that was known as the inner membranes okay and completely outside the mitochondrial membrane so that was known as the outer membrane the space between outer membrane and inner membrane so that was known as the that is the intermembrane space okay so this the space between the outer membrane and the inner membrane so that space was known as a intermembrane space so this space play an important role in the etc electron transport chain so where consist of the lot of proteins or lot of enzyme so those are helpful for the transports of the electron so due to transports of electron certain energy was developed so that was finally that was converted into a atp so that's why here the inner membrane space of the mitochondria so that was helpful for the generations of atp and what were the matrix are present so that matrix is the site for the tca cycle site for the oxidations of the fatty acids and as well as site for the oxidations of the amino acids so this is the typical structure of the mitochondria it consist of outer inner membrane and the inner membrane it was play an important role in the electron transport chain and electron transport chain is also known as a respiratory chain it was helpful for the generations of the atp okay and this inner space that was known as the matrix that was helpful for the uh, metabolism or oxidations of the biological molecules okay so that's why the mitochondria it is the site for the electron transport chain so ne next we can go for the electron transport chain so dear students 
the electron transport chain that is also known as etc or respiratory chain it consists of a series of proteins or organic molecules okay electron transport chain that is the etc or respiratory chain it is a series of proteins and organic molecule found in the inner membranes of the mitochondria okay the inner membrane of the mitochondria it was separated matrix that of with the intermembrane space between that that is the known as the inner membrane so that inner membrane it consists of a series of proteins and series of organic molecules so these series of proteins and organic molecules so they are helpful for the transports of the electron so that's why it is known as the electron transport chain and as well as it was known as the respiratory chain so the electrons they passed from one mem member of the transport chain to the another in a series of redox reactions okay so what are the electrons so they are produced from the electron donors like a nad fad okay so these are the electron acceptor as well as electron donor in the biological process so they are accept the electron they become the nadh as well as fadh2 same molecule they are enter in the etc then they acts as the donors okay so for the series of redox reactions will be taken plus so in in the electron transport chains so water energy released in the, these reaction so that was captured as a proton gradient which is used to make a atp in a process so that process is known as the chemiosmosis so due to transports of electron so every step okay it can follow the various proteins carrier protein that electron can transport one carrier protein to the another carrier proteins so each time it can loses the energy okay so that energy finally is helpful for to make a atp so that process was known as the chemo osmosis so regarding the an overview of the biological oxidation is so already you know so in the cell so various metabolic reactions is occurs regarding the carbohydrates or metabolism of fatty acids amino acids so they are undergo the series of reaction okay so where they convert one from form into another form for example the glucose it can pass the series of reaction finally it can convert either lactate or pyruvate so during that so they are produces the various protons okay so they are donate the proton they can undergo the oxidation and finally so they are produces the carbon dioxide and water so these are the uh, one of the overview of the all the biochemical reactions or metabolism of the biomolecule so they can undergo the series of redox oxidation reactions dehydration hydration reactions then finally so they are produce converted into water and carbon dioxide in some reaction so the nad and fad so they are used as a that is the coenzymes or cofactors so these nad fad so they acts as the electron acceptors okay what are the electrons so they are produced in the series of reactions so those carries by nad fad then carried towards the then they become the nadh and fadh2 then finally so they are enter in the electron transport chain so that was present in the mitochondria so what in the presence of the oxygen okay in the presence of oxygen so these nadh and fadh were they can initiate they can lose the proton that is the hydrogen ion so that hydrogen ion it can reacts with the oxygen molecule and it come forms the water then so this reduced nadh and reduced fad so they are become the nad 
and FAD. Then these NAD FAD is available for the other biochemical reaction to transport the protons or to transport the electrons as well as. Okay, so like that in the biological oxidations or in the electron transport chain, the series of reaction is occurs. So where the NF NADH, FADH, they can release the electron as well as the proton. Then those are enter in the ETC. Then where they can react with the water and to form the sorry, it reacts with the oxygen and to form a water. And finally, it was releases the ATP. So this is the typical overview of the each and every ETC or electron transport chain. So here the basic component of etc are there are the mainly five components so those are essential are involved in the electron transport chain are as well as so they are involved in the productions of atp through a electron transport chain so those are the first one nicotinamide nucleotide that is the nad nadp so these are the coenzymes so already you know so these are the coenzymes so these are helpful for to accept the electron and as well as to donate the electron okay so these are mainly to accept the electron during the oxidation reaction as well as they are donate the electrons so during the reduction reaction so these are the main components of the electron transport chain so they are play an important role in the to accepting the electron that was produced in the various biochemical reactions during the metabolism of carbohydrates fatty acids and amino acids so what are the electron they are produces so they are carried or accepted by the nad and nadp then they become the reduced nad and reduced nadp like nadh and as well as the nadph even the FAD also helpful for the transports of the electron that is the FAD become the FADH2 so that's why so these are the NAD NADP so these are the first basic components of the electron transport chain where they are helpful for the transports of the electron from one carrier protein to the another carrier proteins in the electron transport chain and second one is the flavoproteins okay so flavoproteins it is the second components that was play an important role in the uh, transports of electron in the electron transport chain so here the flavoproteins are mainly two types that is the nads coenzyme q reductase and as well as succinate or succinate dehydrogenase enzyme or succinate coenzyme q dehydrogenase enzyme and both enzyme are both flavoproteins so they are helpful for the transport of the protons okay that is the nadh okay so that can tra uh, transport it reacts with the flavoproteins that is the fmn they may be nadh coenzyme rates or they may be succinate coenzyme uh, dehydrogenase those are commonly known as the that is the fmn so these are the flavoproteins that is the NADS coenzyme Q reductase or succinate coenzyme Q dehydrogenase. So these are flavoproteins are helpful for the transports of the protons. So who can give the proton here? So NADH, FADH, they are dissociate. Okay, they are undergo the ox that is reductions reaction. Then they can lose the okay. They are they can donate the electron along with the protons and those electron or proton from NADH to FADH that was carries by a one group of proteins or enzymes so those are known as the flavoproteins so flavoproteins is also the main components of the electron transport chain so they are helpful for the transports of the electron as well as protons from NADH and FADH to the another carrier proteins okay another carrier proteins so like for example NADH it can react with the flavoproteins it become NAD plus FMNH2 so like that the flavoprotein it can carries the a proton along with electron from the NADH and as well as the FADH2.
so that's why these are also the basic components of the electron transport chain so next one is the that is the iron sulfur protein so these are written as the f e s okay so these iron sulfur proteins so their axis exist as a oxidized form that is the f e uh, plus 3 okay they exist as a fe3 plus 3 and these iron sulfur proteins so, so these are also helpful for the transports of the electrons okay uh, in a electron transport chain so their major function is so they transport the electrons from flavoprotein okay into a coenzyme q so this these are the x as the carrier between coenzyme q and the flavoproteins so they can transport the electron from flavoprotein to a coenzyme q so like that iron sulfur proteins is the third component basic components of the electron transport chain so that was helpful for the transports of the electron from uh, fmn that is the flavoprotein to a coenzyme q so next component that was the coenzyme q so this is one of the main enzyme it was involved in the oxidations reductions reactions in the mitochondria and as well as the coenzyme q is also helpful for the transports of the electron it mainly accept the electron from the flavoprotein so with the help of the iron sulfur proteins and further coenzyme q it can supply the electron towards the series of cytochrome enzyme and then it was helpful for the synthesis of the atp so that's why the coenzyme q it is also play an important role in the electron transport chain that was helpful for the transports of the electron and helpful for the productions of the atp so last one that was the components of the electron transport chain is a cytochromes so these cytochromes mainly involved in the electron transport chains are cytochrome b cytochrome c1 cytochrome c then cytochrome a and as well as the cytochrome a3 so these are the main branch of cytochromes so these are also helpful for the transports of the electron first so these are mainly helpful for the transports of electron from one carrier protein to the another carrier protein simply from coenzyme q to the another carrier proteins okay for it can gain the electron from the coenzyme q and supply to the atp synthase enzyme then that atp synthase enzyme utilize these electron then it was involved in the synthesis of the atp so that is the main role of the cytochromes and cytochromes is also helpful for the removal of the non energized electron so due to transports of electron from one place to the another place they can lose the energy they become the non energy electron and those non energy electron is also transported with the help of the uh, the group of the cytochromes as a component of the atc and as well as the cytochromes so they are helpful for the production of the atp energy so these are the five basic components of the electron transport chain so they are helpful for the transports of the electron from one carrier protein to the another carrier protein so these all are there is a component 1 2 3 4 5 6 these all are the group of carrier proteins okay so along with carrier protein so these are helpful for the <coughs> transports of the electron okay so to transports of electron from one carrier protein to another carrier protein so that electron can loses the energy that electron can loses the energy so that energy finally it can unique together with the help of the cytochrome enzyme our component then it was involved in the development or productions of the atp so like that in the electron transport chain the transports of electron is is helpful for the productions of the atp so here together the electron transport chain and as well as the 
kemi kemi osmosis kemi osmosis means osmosis means the energy released in these biochemical reaction capture as a proton gradient then that proton gradient is utilized to make a atp so that process was known as the chemi osmosis chemi osmosis simple water energy released from the elect transports of electron so that energy can capture uh, capture together and involved in the production of the atp molecule so that phenomena was known as the chemi osmosis and the transports of electron from with the help of the carrier protein from one place to the another places within the inner membranes of the mitochondria so that was known as the electron transport chain and both electron transport chain and as well as the chemi osmosis it was known as a oxidative phosphorylations so oxidative phosphorylations it can denotes the transports of the electrons so with the help of the electron transport chain and as well as it was involved in the how the, it can also show the how the energy was produces or atp was produces that is the chemi osmosis and both process was known as a oxidative phosphorylations okay and here the oxidative phosphorylation okay so that was mainly occurs in the three steps that is the oxidative phosphorylation that process that is the transport of electron along with the generations of atp that is chem osmosis chemi osmosis so that was occurs the basically three steps in the first step the proton pump create an electrical electrochemical gradient that was known as the proton motive force that is nothing but the transports of electron from one protein to the another carrier protein it can produces the energy so that energy was known as the electrochemical gradient or proton motive force that was occurs in the step 1 in step 2 atp synthesis it is an enzyme okay so it is used as subsequent diffusion of the protons okay that is the chemi osmosis and to synthesize the atp so that atp synthesis it is an enzyme okay it was it can capture the whatever energy was generated or releases in the during the transports of electron then it can allow the penetrate the hydrogen ion from intermembrane space to the matrix okay that can helpful for to allow the uh, down movement of uh, that is the proton that is h ion from inner membrane to the matrix then during the movement of the hydrogen ion so with the help of the atp synthesis it was developed the energy in the form of the atp so that was explained in the step 2 and in the step 3 so oxygen can accept the electrons specially non energized electrons so because electron transported they release the energy they become the non energetic so those non energetic is needed to remove otherwise the etc can be stop okay it is cannot block if you are not your cell is not remove the non energized electron okay so that's why the oxygen molecule in the step 3 it was helpful for to remove of the non energized electron by accepting the electrons and it is helpful for to form a water and lack of oxygen so this etc can be stop then only we are suffering from the fatigue okay so we are suffering from the lack of energy in our body due to a lack of the oxygen so that's why the oxygen is the most component that was required for to regulate the oxidative phosphorylation and helpful for the generation of the atp so now we discuss was the one by one that is the steps so those are involved in the oxidative phosphorylations and so these are the basic compounds of the atc that is the nicotinamide nucleotide the source is a niacin then flavoprotein the source is a riboflavins then iron sulfur proteins then as well as the coenzyme q cytochromes and these iron sulfur proteins are these are also helpful for the 
transports of the electron from the RBC itself or during the heme process or synthesis process also. So these are basic compounds and the oxidative process, the oxidative phosphorylation is occurs in the three steps. So next one that is the step one that is the generating of proton motive force. Simple nothing but proton motive force means certain energy that is electrochemical energy that was generated due to movement of the electron from one place to the another place with the help of the carrier protein in, at the end so that all uh, energy was known as the electrochemical gradient or proton motive force so as you know so that is the NADH and FADH2 so these are the electron donor as well as uh, proton donor and same NAD, FAD so these are the electron and proton acceptor also in the biochemical reaction so they are accept the electron so they are the accept the proton during the oxidation of the biomolecule in the glycolysis in the TCA cycle, urea cycle or many other cycles are there so where the NAD is involved in the biochemical reactions or in the oxidation reaction where the protons and electrons are produced so those are accepted by the NAD and FAD then NAD FAD become the reduced form of the as a NADH and FADH2 so NADH2 FADH2 are nothing but so these are the reduced forms of the coenzymes okay so here in the mitochondrial matrix okay so where so this NADH as well as FADH so they are involved in the oxidations or they are carries the hydrogen atoms from biochemical reaction or cytoplasma into the matrix of the mitochondria okay and as well as so these are helpful for to release the high energy Okay, these are also helpful for to release the high energy electron and as well as the protons. So, in the step 1, certain proton motive force or electrochemical gradient was produced because so here, so NADH and FADH2, so they can carry the hydrogen and so those are oxidized and releases the hydrogen that is the proton as well as the electron okay so these NADH FADH2 so they also release the high energy electron so as well as the protons okay so these electrons so they are transported through the uh, electron transport chain so with the help of the series of proteins series of the carrier proteins so those are known as the complex proteins so whatever the electrons so that was religious they are highly energetic so they having they are having the full energy so they are released from the NADH or FADH2 then so they are transported through a are in a not, uh, that is the membranes okay in the transmembrane so with the help of the several carrier proteins so those are known as the complex protein so in the image you can see so this is the complex protein 1 so this is complex protein 2 then coenzyme Q then as well as complex protein 3 then cyto uh, cytosine C then as well as other so not cytosine C but the cytochrome C then as well as the complex protein 4 so these are the carrier protein so they are present in the intermembranes or inner membranes okay so they are present in the and these carrier protein helpful for the transports of electron from here to the here okay that is the that was transport that was helpful for the generations of the certain electrochemical gradient as well as that was known as the proton motive uh, force so the complex one 
that this one it is a NADHQ oxido reductase or NADH dehydrogenase complex. Okay, so that was it is a carrier protein. It is a made up of NADHQ oxid that is oxido reductase or NADH dehydrogenase complex. And complex two, it is a succinate Q oxido reductase from succinate. It, this and complex was helpful for transports of the electron as well as the transports of the uh, protons that is the complex 2 that was the succinate coenzyme q uh, d that is the oxido reductase then this is the coenzyme q and this is the complex 3 complex 3 is the uh, coenzyme q cytochrome c oxido reductase enzyme or complex then cytochrome c then after that, that is the complex 4. The complex 4 is a cytochrome oxidase or cytochrome A A3. Okay, so these are the different four complex carrier proteins. So they are present in the membrane of that is the yeah, membrane of the intermembrane of a mitochondria. So they are helpful for transports of the electron. So in the next step. So, these electrons, what were released from the NADH, FADH2, so they are transported. First, they are bind with the here, the complex 1, that is the uh, NADQ oxidoreductase or NADS dehydrogenase complex, where it can release the some energy. Okay, so when it can bind with the complex 1 carrier proteins, okay, then this carrier protein, it can transport electrons. So, when the complex is forms between the electron, that is the highly energetic, okay, then it can re release some energy, okay, when it is formed the complex, then it can release some energy. So, that energy was helpful for the movement of hydrogen ion from outside, that is, it is the, it is the matrix. So, this is the matrix area, this is matrix area and this is the inner membrane area. Okay, this is the inner membrane area and this is the matrix area. So, in the matrix, various biochemical reactions occur. So, where they can produce the hydrogen along with NADH and FADH2. And as well as NADH, FADH2, they are oxidized. Then release the electron as well as the protons. And this electron, first it can complex with the complex 1. That is the NADQ, oxidase or NADH dehydrogenase. Then it loses some energy or it can cause the loss of some energy so that energy was helpful for the movement of this hydrogen ion outside from matrix to the inner membranes okay, so like that the hydrogen ion so that was uh, enter from matrix to the inner membrane space what are the energy that was produced by the uh, complex between electron and complex one carrier proteins the next time same electron further you can transport then complex with the complex 2 carrier protein then another some energy was religious then that release energy also helpful for the uh, that is the removal of another molecule of hydrogen ion from the matrix into the inner membrane space then after that it can with the help of coenzyme 2 it can complex with the carrier protein complex 3 then another and here also it release some energy some part of energy then that energy utilized by this carrier protein and helpful for the removal of the hydrogen ion from matrix into the inner membrane space then with the help of the cytochrome c it can move towards the complex proteins four where that is the cytochrome say a a3 okay so where uh, it can reacts with the that it form the complex okay then release some energy then that is also helpful for the uh, that is the removal of hydrogen so like that in the matrix the hydrogen concentration can be decreases and in the inner membrane the hydrogen concentration can be increases and these hydrogen ion they having the certain energy in the form of the electrochemical gradient so that energy was known as the proton motive force and what the electron is the end exists in the end so that is the non-energized electron electron 
so this electron do not have any energy because in every step in every reaction during transport from one complex carrier protein to another it loses some energy so that's why finally it become the non energizer and these uh, proton so they are enter in the inner membrane so they will be the highly energetic so that they are having the certain kind of the energy so that energy was known as the electrochemical gradient or proton motive force so like that the hydrogen ion can enter into the inner membrane surface uh, space, uh, through um, from a matrix with the help of the various character carrier protein and energy that was released from the uh, transport of electron from one carrier protein to the another carrier proteins so second step that is the atp synthesis via chemiosmosis okay so already you know the proton motive force was generated in the inner membrane surface or space okay so due to high electron gradient okay or proton motive force it can move the uh, proton that is the hydrogen ion from high concentration to the okay it can move the high concentration to the towards the low concentration gradient already you know so always molecule they can move from high concentration to the low concentration by a electrochemical gradient so this is the force that is the electrochemical gradient or proton motive force it was helpful for the further the movement of proton from inner surface area to the uh, matrix okay so the inside the matrix okay so like that so they are move so with the help of the this proton motive force so due to movement of hydrogen ion or that hydrogen ion was move inside the matrix so with the help of the another carrier okay so with the help of the another carrier so that was known as the atp synthetase so this is the atp synthetase or another complex that is the complex 5 or enzyme so this enzyme it was helpful for the down movement of hydrogen ion from inner membrane surface area to the matrix okay so during the movement of hydrogen ion through a atp synthase okay it can trigger the molecular rotations of an enzyme it can trigger the molecular molecular rotations of the enzyme then it can helpful for the production of the energy so due to molecular movement so whatever the energy was present on the proton so that energy was converted into a atp so like that in the step 2 so the atp was produces in the step 1 so whatever the energy was present in the electron so that was loses in the every step then that carries by hydrogen ion and deposited in the inner space area and they produce some energy that was known as the proton motive force okay so that proton motive force it can allow the uh, down movement or the movement of the hydrogen ion from high concentration to the low concentration with the help of the another carrier protein that was known as the complex 5 or atp synthase so due to movement of these hydrogen ion certain rotation on the enzyme is occurs so enzyme can start to rotate due to entry of hydrogen ion from outside to the inside then rotation is occurs so that rotation was helpful for the collection of the energy from the protons okay collection of the energy from the proton that was collected into a atp so like that the atp was generated in the during the electron transport chain okay so next one that is the last step that is step 3 that was known as the uh, reduction of oxygen okay so here the oxygen molecule so that can accept the electron okay so this oxygen molecule here it was helpful for the removal of the non energized electron okay so after second step even after the production of atp the etc the electron transport chain will be the continue 
or oxidative process phosphorylation will be continue so that can continue up to the removal of the non energized molecule that was produced during the transports of electron from one place to another place with the help of the carrier protein in the end it become the non energized so that non energized molecule was still it can removed so with the help of the oxygen so this oxygen okay it can helpful for removal of the electron or non energized molecule or electron by involving in the conversion of proton into a water okay so here the oxygen it can reacts with the non energized protons the and electrons then it becomes the water okay so like that it can clear the non energized proton okay from the matrix then it can allow the okay it can allow the productions of the energized proton electron in the here so with the help of the nadh and fadh if these non energized electron as well as protons if is not removed by oxygen means the etc can be blocked the etc can be stopped but the presence of oxygen okay so that was helpful for the removal of the non energized uh, electron okay by reacts with the proton to form a water so like that the matrix was the empty and helpful for the regulations of the further regulations of the energized electron and energized proton so like that the further nadh fadh they release the proton then still then continue the et cycle so like that so here the oxygen it was play an important role in the removal of the non energized electron as well as the protons if the oxygen is not present in here means then the etc can be stopped then the persons are suffering from the fatigue okay when we are suffering fatigue means when our mitochondria do not have the sufficient concentrations of the oxygen so that's why in the covid patient due to lack of oxygen saturations or decrease of oxygen content so their energy level was decreases okay their energy level was decreases so due to lack of energy so all the metabolic process that will be stopped in their body so due to that the death will be the confirmed so that's why so my heartily request to you all to always maintain the oxygen content in your body only the method is by yoga pranayama or inhalation of the warm water that can remove the mucus secretion then also it can clear the tract then only you can got the correct inspiration and as well as expression so that's why so in your family you can start with the pranayam yoga whatever they are present in the youtubes follow you you can follow only now in condition only those you can follow so those can enhance the oxygen content in your body so here the oxygen that oxygen is required here and the, this lack of this oxygen okay so there is uh, etc cannot be uh, continue that was the stop electron transport chain can stop and electron transport chain can stop means the energy is not uh, produces then so these uh, h ion they become the free radicals and these free radicals so they are causes the failure of the multi organ so already you know regarding the free radicals they can generated in our body as well as so they are came from the environment so they are the nothing but they are the non energetic oxygen molecule or non energetic proton they acts as the free radicals so they are responsible for the formation of the various free radicals in our body so that's why you should be have the correct oxygen content in your body in future also to avoid the various kind of the malfunctions of the organs or many system so this is the regarding the etc as well as the oxidative phospho relations so now short note regarding the structural organizations of etc so this is structural organizations so here the, in the step 1 the nadh they are really uh, converted into nad in this is the proton as well as the electron so that can transport with as a complex 1 complex 2 complex 3 complex 4 
then also the complex 2 is the succin conversion of succin to fumarate then that is also helpful for the movement of the electron from one place to the another place then it can release the energy then that can during the influx of hydrogen ion the energetic hydrogen ion from outside to inside it can generate the ATP by utilizing the ADP plus phosphate then formally form the ATP then this proton become the non-energized proton and as well as non-energized electron so that was removed with the help of the molecular oxygen so this is the structural organization of the ETC so next one that is regarding the regulations of oxidative phosphorylations okay so who can enhance the who can regulate the oxidative phosphorylations or electron transport chain so electron transport chain as well as the oxidative phosphorylation and as well as the productions of ATP so that was mainly depending upon the demand of energy or demand of the cellular energy if the cells are more active then it was involved in the synthesis of the more enzymes biomolecule or hormones then its energy level was increases then so these oxidative phosphorylations can be increases or ETC can be increases that was that's why the oxidative phosphorylations or ETC that was regulated by the energy demand by a cell or cellular energy demands and as well as the oxidative phosphorylation so that was regulated by the cell's energy status okay cell energy status if the cell energy status is low means automatically uh, in the matrix the beta oxidation is occurs or TCA cycle is occurs or as well as uh, oxidations of amino acids occur they produces the more protons electron and then they are helpful for the uh, productions of the uh, regulations of the oxidative phosphorylations or as well as regulations of the EDC so that's why so energy status in the cell that was also responsible for regulations of the ETC as well as the oxidative phosphorylations and as well as some energy giving uh, requiring process that is example protein synthesis so that was required the more energy so in the form of the ATP so that's why so when the cells was involved in the synthesis of protein means then the oxidative phosphorylations can increases or the electron transport chain can be increases and as well as the ADP available if the more ADP available means the more ATP can be produced and more oxidative phosphorylations can be occur so like that so energy status of the cell or cellular environment so that was required or that was regulated the oxidative phosphorylations or ETC and as well as the oxygen content is there certain uh, components are there or scenario of the cell or cell environment components of cell or cellular status oxygen conditions or mitochondrial status or oxygen content of the mitochondria so these are all are the components so they are responsible for the regulations of the oxidative phosphorylations as well as the electron transport chain so next one is the so regarding the etc inhibitors or oxidative uh, phosphorylations inhibitors so the, the various uh, drugs are there so they are mainly inhibit the electron transport chain so that is the uh, drug like a so that is this is the uh, uh, flow charts of the etc that is nad then into fmn then fes then coenzyme q cyto that is cytochrome b then cytochrome c1 cytochrome c then finally cytochrome a3 then finally that oxygen is helpful for the removal of the uh, that is the non energized molecules so where the complex proteins are involved so here the complex 1 is involved here the complex 3 is involved here the complex 4 is involved so the various drugs are there they are inhibit the etc by inhibiting the com activity of the complex proteins or enzymes okay so here the drugs like uh, rotinone then amobarbital and uh, pyrisidine so they are mainly inhibit the complex one then they block the transports of the electron from fmn to the coenzyme q so these drug like uh, the rot uh, rotinone amobarbital and uh, pyrisidine so they are also block the etc by blocking the complex one by inhibiting the transports of electron from fmn to the coenzyme q so next that is the complex 3 blocker like a antimycin it is the a that is the it is a uh, antibiotics then uh, dimer it is a antidote 
helpful for the treatment of the heavy metal poisoning then ball okay there is a british some uh, levy some is their name so that is the ball is also used as the antidote for the uh, management of the organophosphorus poisoning or pesticide poisoning so these antidotes and antibiotics so they are also inhibit the electron transport chain or oxidative phosphorylations by inhibiting the uh, transports of electron from cytochrome b to the cytochrome c1 by inhibiting the complex 3 and complex 3 is a that is the cytochrome c uh, dehydrogenase so that enzyme actually can be blocked by the antimycin a dimercaprol and ball then they inhibit the etc as well as the oxidative phosphorylations and finally certain drugs are there like a cyanide h2s carbon monoxide so they are inhibit the complex four there is a complex four so that was helpful for the removal of the non-energized proton electron okay then it can allow the next etc and lack of this complex four there is a no removal of non-energized molecule can be taken first then the etc can be blocked then the oxygen deficiency occurs in the body and all the biochemical reactions of body can be stopped by blocking the complex 4 and complex 4 is a cytochrome AA3 or cytochrome oxidase enzyme it is also involved in the oxidations that was helpful for the transports of the electron from one to another and as well as removal of the non-energized electron and proton so with the help of the oxygen and like cyanide HTS carbon monoxide the death is occurs due to blockage of etc or lack of energy or atp so atp is required for regular it is required for the regular functions of the body and lack of atp all biochemical process can stop finally the death is occurs so that was happens in the same case that is the use of cyanide sts carbon monoxide during the case of the burning okay in the building the foam, the air will be polluted air will be flame will be accumulated so that was cons consist of a lot of carbon monoxide due to that it can stop the energy source to your body then the death will be occurs in the case of cyanide poisoning estes poisoning and as well as the carbon monoxide poisoning so like that so these are the drug like rotonin amobarbital pyripicidine then anti antimycin a dimercaprol ball as well as cyanide h2s carbon monoxide so they are inhibit the electron transport chain so these are the etc inhibitor or oxidative phosphorylation inhibitors